So in this video, we are going to learn about the try statement, which is kind of like an if statement, but the condition is going to be that an error occurs or not. So uh, this is kind of a condition that we could otherwise not really formulate, but the try statement kind of uh, enables us to do that. So let's look at, it, at an example. Let's create a new file and let's call it the try statement. So remember in the previous video, where we talked about the three different uh, categories of errors. So the first of one was the syntax errors. So this is basically whenever um, Python does not understand what we want from it. So in other words, we will always see this red error message below the code cell. So an example could be if I write for number in, let's name a list. And uh, let's maybe go ahead and simply forget the colon. You note there should be a colon, but let's simply forget it. And let's say simple, simply print number and we will get a syntax error. So no matter what we do here, or this, this cell of code is never ever going to execute. It will always result in a red error message here because Python simply doesn't understand what we, what we want. So that's a syntax error. Then the third kind that we talked about was the semantic error. I'm not going into an example here, but what a semantic error is, is basically um, we are not going to see any red error message at all, but the program will calculate an outcome that for us as the human, as the, uh, as the person who's interested in the result has a wrong meaning, a wrong semantic meaning. But then in between, we had this uh, second category of so-called runtime errors. So these are errors where the syntax is correct. So Python knows what, what is going to happen or what it should do, but for whatever reason, the, the data is uh, not good. And uh, therefore uh, there is an, an exception occurring. So an example for that, an example for a runtime error would be division. So note how if, if I say one divided by zero, I get a zero division error, but this is not a syntax error because Python knows what it should do. It just can't do it with the zero. So in other words, if the number, if the second number would be uh, two instead of zero, then of course everything would go fine, okay? So um, how do these errors occur in real life? Well, most often uh, you're reading in data from the real world, like from a database or maybe a user enters some data. And um, then whatever user, uh, whatever the user entered, this is wrong for the program. Okay, so maybe think of uh, think of an example where you open a CSV file, you read in all the numbers in the column, and you do some math, some calculations. And let's say there are a couple of um, uh, rows where, for example, there is no entry. Then you you are dividing by none basically, or doing something with none. But also, let's say there is a zero in a in a cell in an in a CSV file and you want to divide by this cell and then you load it in and technically speaking, it should be correct, but somehow the bad data went into your program and then your program crashes. So that's the characteristic, okay? The, the errors, so to say, sometimes are visible. Sometimes they occur whenever there's bad data. So let's uh, model that. So um, let's do a little experiment. I'm going to import the random uh, module again. And now we will um, model user input okay so let's go ahead and say user input is equal to and uh, let's draw a random number so let's say random dot choice and give it a list for example the number zero one two and three so four numbers and one of them happens to be zero and let's say i want to calculate some result let's say i want to go ahead and say one over user input and sometimes this code cell is going to work, as we see, and sometimes it won't. So sometimes you get this red error message. So this is what I mean by this is the characteristic of a so-called runtime error, that sometimes you see the error, sometimes you don't. Most often you don't, but sometimes you see it. And for these kind of errors, so for the runtime errors, um, you can use the built-in uh, statement called the try statement. Uh, to handle these cases. So in other words, this is like writing an if statement now by saying, hey, if something goes wrong, do this, but if nothing goes wrong, do that. Okay, so that is what we are about to do, what we are about to learn here. So let's go ahead and say, um, I want to execute this code such that um, I can handle an exception. So what we are going to do is we are going to write try and um, the line ends with a colon, so it's a header line. That means the code block here is going to be uh, moved one indentation level to the right. And then the try statement has 
another clause, a second clause, just like the if statement may have an if clause, an elif clause, or several elif clauses and one else clause at the end. The try statement has always a try clause, but then um, it has an optional clause, which is called the accept clause. And the accept clause is basically the clause that is going to be triggered if an exception occurs. So let's go ahead and maybe um, let's go and write here print um, the result is and down here we are going to say print um, something went wrong and if I execute this now I'm never ever going to see the red error message because sometimes I simply see the error message but we don't see um, the red error message from above. So in other words, the code cell um, never as a whole um, results in an error, okay? It, the, the error is, so to say, handled. So now let's um, talk about something that could be wrong here. So maybe let's do the following. Let's go ahead and um, copy paste that out here. And let's go ahead and say a result is equal to, let's set, create a new variable called result, assign to that the result of the calculation. And then in the, the next line, we are going ahead and we are going to say print the result is, and we are simply going to say um, the, the, the result, you're going to use the result variable. However, if I now go ahead and um, let's say I write, for example, result wrong, so I'm going to use some variable that is not de defined then I'm going to get, I should get a name error. But as we see, I don't get a name error. Okay, so in other words, I'm always seeing this uh, error message here because always in this to in this code block, something will go wrong because the, the name result wrong is never going to be there. So in other words, what we could say is the accept clause handles errors that we don't want to handle. So the only error we want to handle is division by zero. And this is called the zero division error. So let's specify that. So let's write there except zero division error. And now what's going to happen is, um, well, for, I now see the name error, but sometimes whenever uh, I divide by zero, so whenever uh, zero is drawn, then what that means is the first line will already result in an error, a zero division error. And then we will jump right here and uh, we will see this nice error message here. However, if uh, the zero is not drawn as the random number, then always I see the name error. And that is a good thing here because the name error, I don't want to handle in this example. So now as a programmer, I see, okay, there's an error that I don't want to handle. So let's fix that by simply uh, correcting the result. And now we will never ever see a red error message again. So now why, what is better to the previous solution? Well, now we are only handling very specific errors and this is a best practice, okay? You should never basically have um, a line like this, except colon, because this will accept all the errors that could occur and um, even errors you cannot even think of and you should not do that. So the best practice is to simply specify what error you want to accept, okay? And now let's go uh, one step uh, further. So how could we... Um, um, go about the try uh, or what other clauses are there in the try except statement. So let's go ahead and introduce another clause. It's the so-called else clause. So the else clause we know already from the if statement, but it also exists for the try statement. So now how um, this works is as follows. Let me um, briefly copy paste this print here down. Now let's um, transform the code into this. So now what this is going to do is we are going to try, this is why the try statement has its name. So we're going to try out this line of code and we see if it works. And if it works, then we are going to go into the else clause. So in other words, the else clause is what is going to be executed if there is no error. So this is basically the, the condition. So in other words, we could say the except clause is kind of like the if, so to say, and the else is basically the else that goes together with the if. So in other words, we, we basically say, try out this code. If the zero division error occurs, do that. Otherwise, do this. So in other words, if no error occurs. Okay. And then let's introduce one more clause that you often see in practice. It's the so-called finally clause. And the finally clause 
um, is basically um, a class where you can put a code that is always going to be executed. Okay, so we could say maybe I am always printed here. Okay, so no matter what's going to happen, so we see in the first line of output, either we get back the result or we get back an error message, but independent of that, we always see I'm always printed. So what would you, what in a real uh, world scenario, what do you want to do in a finally clause? Well, usually, let's say, if you open a file and you read in data and something goes wrong, what you want to do is you want to close the file in all cases. So uh, typically in a finally clause, you will see um, people uh, close files or um, disconnect from a database because um, um, you, for technical reasons, um, a computer can only have uh, an upper limit of many um, files open at the same time. And uh, so you always want to be a good citizen, so to say, and close all the files that you open from within Python uh, as well. And uh, therefore, to make sure that a file is always closed, you could put um, the closing command inside the finally clause. Okay, so this is what, what finally is used for in practice. But let's briefly review uh, everything we learned. So uh, we briefly reviewed that um, there are three kinds of errors, syntax errors, runtime errors, and semantic errors. You should go back to a previous video where I talked about that and look into detail if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about here. But then for one of the three categories, in particular the runtime errors, um, you can use the try statement to handle these kind of errors. And the try statement uh, works like this. You always have the try clause where you put all the code uh, that could go wrong. And the best practice is to not have lots of code there. So ideally you only have one line there so that you don't, um, you don't um, yeah, accept uh, errors on a too wide range of code. So that's why you should wanna keep this uh, as few as possible lines of code here. Then you have an accept clause. The accept clause is technically speaking optional. So you could also um, have uh, only a try and a finally clause, for example. But um, let's say if you specify an accept clause, you should always specify the kind of error, right? You could, and you sometimes see that in practice have several of these uh, error uh, accept clauses. So you could have a second and a third accept clause, just like we could have more than one elif clauses in an if statement. The else clause is whatever gets executed if there is no error. So if everything goes okay here, then the else clause is going to be executed and the finally clause will always be executed and we use it for so-called so teardown code. So code that um, basically shuts down a program cleanly. Okay, so that is a try statement. It is very much in, in conceptual uh, spirit related to the if statement, even though it's, um, it's uh, a different uh, kind of statement. Okay, so I see you in the next video.